All right. Well, we are semi live today. It is uh, the first Friday of the month. Uh, our guest today, Angie Taylor, one of our recent uh, retreatants, just started a new job. And so we, we weren't able to talk to her live. So she and I are sitting down just a couple of days before uh, the live date to, to pre-record this. So um, I am Steve Gibbons. I am the executive director of the Bridges Foundation. Uh, we offer the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola in everyday life uh, through a program here. That's, it's a nine-month retreat program that encompasses one-on-one uh, -on -one work with a prayer companion, a daily commitment to prayer, and work with a small uh, community of others who are, who are doing the same thing as you are. So that, that's what we do. And today we're, we're talking with Angie Taylor, who was one of our retreatants just this past year. So we're going to be talking with her about that experience, about how she came to it, a little bit about her life, uh, and a little bit about a, an idea that's kind of been laid on her heart after the, her experience of the exercises, which is how can we get more uh, African Americans, Catholic Af African Americans, to be doing to be doing this program just as Angie did, and, and as so many others have. So we're going to talk about all that today. Angie, it's it's really good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Good to see you. Uh, so let me tell you just a little bit. Well, she's going to tell she's going to tell her a little more about herself. But let me just say that, as I mentioned, she was recently hired as the manager of employee partnerships for a really great um, uh, nonprofit here in town that I, I I knew quite a bit about when I worked at Washington University. It's called BioSTL. It is uh, helping to lay the foundation in our region's uh, innovation economy. Uh, they have a great set of programs that are designed to help, help elevate uh, the St. Louis community's leadership in areas like agriculture and medicine and healthcare and other technology areas. And Angie's got a lot of background in that herself. So uh, with all of that being said, uh, welcome again, Angie. And let's begin by just telling us a little bit about who you are, where you came from, uh, what was your, you know, your 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 family of origin, your 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 a little bit about your faith story growing up. So just kind of bring us up to you know maybe uh, where you were before you you uh, did the Bridges program with us. Awesome. Good deal. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, I am STL made. I was born and raised in St. Louis. I am from the Walnut Park area that's in North City. And I people always ask, what high school did you attend? I attended Metro High School. It was a college prep high school, um, one of the magnet schools that was amazing. And it's still amazing. Um, I was born and raised Catholic, you know, they call us cradle Catholics. And I was a part of youth ministry back in the late eighties, early nineties, and had an amazing time as a um, African-American Catholic growing up in North St. Louis in the North Deanery. Um, I participated in, um, well, at church, I was a lector because I would see people reading and I told my grandmother, I can do that. And so as a young, kid, I was up there reading, you know, the word of God. And then um, as I got a little bit older, I got into the youth group back then. And the church was so busy and active in St. Louis at that time in the North Deanery. Um, I participated in Ujima back then. I what, is, what, what, is, what is that? What is Ujima? Ujima is a Swahili word. I forgot exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. But we used to meet at the Rock Church and it was... Um, people from the North Deanery that came together and um, did activities and um, learned about our faith and participated in, you know, church events through this organization. So it was a great way to meet other African-American Catholics in the St. Louis area. Um, we did um, Camp Canacuck in the summers. It was amazing. And that, that was in um, the Ozarks area. Um, one summer, the Catholic Church of the St. Louis Archdiocese brought a couple of um, guys in from, I think they were like from New York or something, and they were thespians, they were of the theater, and they taught us 
and prepared us to do a presentation of God's spell back then. So we would meet at the um, Rock Church in the summer, in the evenings, you know, once the sun went down and we would um, learn to sing and to dance and to act and all those things. And at the end of the summer, the culminating event was a production of God's spell. And it was amazing. I mean, I really had a good time being a young Black Catholic back then. And I thought that Black folks were just all Catholic because that's what I knew. So when I went to college, it wasn't so common, I realized. Um, I went to undergraduate school at Northwest Missouri State in um, Maryville, Missouri. I received a bachelor's degree in um, broadcasting with a minor in general business. And like I said, that's where I realized that uh, black Catholics was a, um, I was like a unicorn. It wasn't very common. Mm -hmm. So leaving um, Northwest Missouri State, I went on to graduate school, received my master's degree from the University of Missouri, Columbia. Um, I went to school on a Gus T. Rigel scholarship, so it was free. Got my degree in communications, speech, and um, had my, got married, had my first son, um, Things kind of went the way they did. And so I ended up coming back to St. Louis with just me and my son. Um, I was a youth minister at the Catholic Church for a while um, in the city. It was um, St. Simon of Cyrene and um, did young adult ministry. And so I collaborated with a Baptist church in Chesterfield called First Baptist of Chesterfield. And we had a young adult ministry called Yams. So Basically, I was just really always very heavily involved in church. You know, mm -hmm. even when I went away to college, I still participated in the Newman Center and things like that. Um, when I got a little bit older as an adult, though, I started visiting other churches. And so for a while, I attended a Methodist church. And for a while, I, I attended a Baptist church because I enjoyed the music. And there were more people my age and my that looked like me participating in those churches. But once the pastor at the church I attended, when he passed away and my grandmother passed away, I came back to the Catholic church in 2015. Mm -hmm. And so um, I became a youth minister at my church then because um, I had another son and he was, you know, youth ministry age. And I wanted to, him to have some of the experience I had. So um, I received support from the um, archdiocese, youth ministry Archdi archdiocese of St. Louis. And they gave us a, a scholarship. Um, the church I attend now is Our Lady of the Holy Cross in Baden. And the church does well for itself, but we don't have a lot of money. And so we received a scholarship. And also um, the um, teen ministry, the life teen ministry, um, gave us access to their electronic lesson plans and things of that nature. So as I was preparing lessons, learning the lessons to present to the youth, I was also learning more about my own faith. There were so many things that I didn't realize that I didn't know about my own faith. Like when I was trying to teach the youth how to do the rosary, I had to learn the rosary myself because I didn't know how to do it. Um, also, um, I learned about, I learned the fact that the Eucharist really is the body and blood of Christ. Um, as a kid, I just thought it was symbolic. And so as an adult, I realized that that's really the body and blood of Christ. And I learned to really appreciate Mother Mary and her role in our lives as Catholics. Um, then the pandemic hit. And so youth ministry pretty much came to a crash. Um, and then once the pand pandemic kind of lifted, the youth that I worked with, they had already graduated from high school. So I couldn't do that anymore. So while the pandemic was still kind of going on, I volunteered at Mary Grove um, with a young lady just to kind of, you know, keep active with youth. And then- um, And Mary Grove is a, a, a home, right? For, for young people up in like Florissant, correct? It's in Florissant, exactly. Yeah. I live in Florissant, yeah. so that's why I chose that one. And I had participated, worked with them in the past, you know, presenting Bible study to the youth back then. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Um, and then just during the pandemic, I just really was trying to feed myself more. So I went out and bought the Catechism of the Catholic Church book and I started learning it off of YouTube. Yes, I'm here to say I did. And then I was watching a lot of, um, watching mass on TV, looking at Heart of the Nation, watching EWTN. 
and just realizing what I didn't know. And then also right before the pandemic, I had bought a um, Catholic youth Bible, Life Teen Youth Bible, because the Bibles before I just used the King James NIV. And I realized that, man, there are books in this Bible that I wasn't familiar with because the other versions don't contain them. Um, so I was just voracious and hungry. And I just kind of kept having these thoughts that I wanted to learn more. I wanted to become deeper in my spirituality. I was thinking about attending a monastery, but I knew I didn't want to be a nun or anything like that. So one day I was reading the um, St. Louis Review back in 2001. And I saw it was about this time of the year. It was like July ish or whatever when I saw it. And I saw the Bridges program being advertised. Then I had just watched a program about um, 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 Ignatius of Loyola, St. Ignatius of Loyola, because it was during that time of his feast. You know, so I just watched that program. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Then I saw this in the paper, not realizing they connected. And when I first saw it, it said that the online presentation had ended. So I just thought, okay, well, I, I missed it. And then the next week when I got the paper again, it was advertised again. And I saw your name, Steve Gibbons. And mm -hmm. I remembered you from working at Washington University. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's Steve Gibbons. I remember him. He was so nice, you know, because <laughs> I worked in arts and sciences. And so I would see you when you came to speak with Dean McLeod. Mm. So I called you and I explained to you my situation that I couldn't participate in the um, in-person sessions because of work and also because of the location of them. They were like, you know, nowhere near North County. So you gave me a spiel about the um, spiritual exercises and the Bridges program over the phone. And you led me to the Bridges website. So you had me review that. You had me pray about it. I did that. And like a day later, I was like, I want to do it. And so I'm emailing yeah. you and, and I'm registering for it and doing the application. And that's how I came to the Bridges program. And it's been exciting ever since. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm, well, we're so glad uh, that you, you all those things fell into place because we, we often say, those of us involved in Bridges, that uh, people come for lots of different reasons and they come from lots of different invitations. So, you know, maybe they see an ad in the review, maybe they see something in the parish bulletin, maybe a friend says something to them, maybe they read something 10 years ago, and then finally they see it again 10 years later, and now it's time. And that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why did you end up thinking the time was right this time, do you think? I was hungry. Um, the Holy Spirit just had me just hungry for growing deeper in my faith. Um while doing my own little personal journey, I learned about the Divine Mercy Chaplet and novenas and all these different things. And I just wanted more tools, more resources to help me on this journey towards heaven and to help others get towards heaven. So, like I said, I had even thought about participating or visiting a monastery or just something to just give me that sense. And so when I read about what the um, Bridges program was about and about the spiritual exercises, I knew that this is what I was hungering for. And I feel like truly that the Holy Spirit led me to this and led me to you because if I didn't recognize your name, I probably wouldn't have called. But because I recognized your name, you know, I called. Mm -hmm. And once I started the program, I knew it was nine months and people were telling me, oh my God, that's so long, you know. But I felt like, I have time to do other things. You know, I, I learned to knit recently. If I can spend time knitting, you mm -hmm. know, an hour a day, I can spend time an hour a day with the Lord Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, the whole nine, you know. So that's how I knew it was the time for me because I was hungry for it. And I knew that I can make time in my day for it because it was a priority. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that we have this, these spiritual exercises that have been, gifted to us over the centuries by generation after generation of, of Jesuits for, for many years. And, and, and then lay people in, in, in more recent years, you know, have been more and more involved in, in receiving the exercises and giving and giving the exercises. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at the same time, this is a, a document that's 500 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what did you find in that um, 
I guess what what were kind of your great takeaways from your experience uh, of the exercises? What what are the um, the one or two things that if someone says, well, why did you do that? What did you get out of it? What what would you say? Two great takeaways that I obtained from the spiritual um, exercises was um, active indifference, mm-hmm. meaning what? to actively choose to be indifferent about everything except for what God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit called for me to do. Mm-hmm. And that was a challenge because I tend to like to be in control of things. So that's one great takeaway. And the second great takeaway was the sushi pay prayer, which says, take Lord and receive all of my liberty, my memory, my understanding and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given to me and to you, I return it. Everything is yours. <laughs> Do with it what you will. Give me on your love and your grace. That is enough for me. And, and that's a huge takeaway for me. It has changed my whole worldview of things. Mm. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that's beautif- beautifully said and beautifully pronounced. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, we're, we're starting to run out of time, so I, I want to make sure we leave enough time for this. You and I have talked a couple times now uh, about this idea, or probably more than an idea, kind of a, a, a a dream maybe that you, that you have for extending uh, the opportunity for more and more African Americans to experience the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how that came about and, and what that looks like for you and, and, and what would you like to see happen? Okay. Well, one thing about the um, Bridges Retreat that's also really important to me is the community that we built, even though I participated online. And so just the synergy and the energy that I received from the community, the online community, it really fed my soul. And during my meditations, I could see in my own head, me in a rural setting out in the country somewhere with other African-Americans from St. Louis City County, learning the spiritual exercises, either the full, you know, nine month or an abbreviated program, but just something where they're taken out of their usual setting and they're in nature where God can be seen everywhere. And I'm facilitating and presenting the spiritual exercises. That's a vision that I have in my head. And that's a desire, burning desire I have in my heart because Although I had a great experience as a youth growing up in St. Louis, you know, archdiocese, there are a lot of tools that the church offered that I missed. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there are plenty of other African-Americans in St. Louis that are in my age group. I'll admit I'm over 50. So those who are between like 40 and 50 ish, I think that they could benefit from gaining these additional tools that are available from the church that we may or may not be using properly or at all. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the community from um, the Bridges program really helped me to hone in on this vision that God has given me. For example, Father Bob from our group, he um, gave me this book about heroic leadership and a biography about St. Ignatius. So we communicated online. He was like, hey, meet me at the Jesuit Hall down on Lindo, I drove down, he left the books at the counter and I grabbed them and I've been reading them all summer. You know, so just that kind of stuff where I'm being fed and I know that the Holy Spirit is leading me that way. But yes, that is my desire. And if anyone else can see that vision with me, please contact us. That's right. Uh, yeah, un- uh, because we're not live today, uh, we can't take questions, but we, w- we will see your comments if you leave them on Facebook. So. Please, please do that, especially if um, you'd like to talk to Angie or, or maybe uh, if there's something you can do to help to help that vision become a little, little more clear and maybe involve some more people. Um, you can also reach out to me through our website, uh, through, uh, let me put that up here, for the, the bridgesfoundation.org. Um, my name and email address is, you'll, you'll find it there. Leave a message. Uh, through me, something you want to you want to communicate to Angie, and we'll make sure that happens too. So, 
Um, Angie, thank you for your time today. Um, I, I am going to give you the last word though. And you're, you're, first of all, you're so eloquent and, and you, I could see you could have been that, that broadcaster you thought you might've been for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you certainly have that kind of presence. Um, uh, is there anything in, in closing? Well, let me say before we close that, um, we're, we are going to have a, an episode, um, uh, about a month from today on Friday, September 2nd at noon. And my guests will be Ted and Donna Agniel. Uh, they are retreatants from just this past year too. Uh, and they went through it as, as a couple. Um, and so we're going to be talking to them about that, that experience. Um, so if you want, again, more information on our retreat, uh, our, our next retreat starts in September and the deadline for registration is near the end of August. So if you're thinking about it, and you're watching this video, uh, both Angie and I hope this will be the nudge that will uh, move you a little forward toward doing that. So look us up, check us out. Um, Angie, I'm gonna give you the last word. Is there anything you'd like to say to the folks uh, who are either seeing this now or will see it later uh, about the impact, I guess, that these, these exercises have had on you? I ask that the audience pray and listen to the Holy Spirit today after you've heard this message and ask what role can you play in bringing this Bridges retreat to all people in St. Louis, but particularly those of color. And also if you have access to um, a rural property, farmland, any of that that can be used for such a retreat, please also pray about how you may be used by the Lord to bring this about. And if you are a person of color, please consider participating in the Bridges program. Thank you, Angie. It's, it's such a delight to have you part of our community now. And we, we hope that um, we hope we remain part of your community for quite a long time. So thanks again for, for uh, being with me today. Uh, we're going to, we're going to end it here. And again, please leave some comments and, and reach out if you'd like more information on this. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Angie.